Today we're going to be looking at the M Audio Key Station Mini 32 and we're going to be doing it right now. Hey guys, so as I said in the intro, today we're going to be looking at the M Audio Keystation Mini 32 and I'm going to be giving a user review of it. Just a bit of background, I've had this keyboard for about four years, so it's definitely an experienced user review and not just a review by someone who's played it for about 10 minutes the other day. It's lightweight, it's portable, it's easy to use, you just plug it in and you're flying. If I can remember correctly, I don't even think I had to download any drivers for this thing, so it really is just plug in and go, but I may be wrong, I may have misremembered that. Even so, the drivers will be there on the website. I regularly take it on my travels with me. As a student, it's so helpful to have something really lightweight but does the job that you can just fit in a suitcase really easily. It's also really handy when you really don't have a studio space available. I recently used it in my parents' kitchen. It's got a basic USB connectivity so you can just plug it into any spare USB port you've got. Although my keyboard has recently developed an aversion to my USB port so I have to plug it into one of the spare spots on my laptop. It's got a volume knob on the left hand side. It's as well as sustain and edit buttons, modulation, pitch bend, up and down, octave up and down. So basically you've got your basic editing buttons there. Though of course having buttons instead of a wheel or faders is a real faff and it's really difficult to get a nice smooth automation there. You'll probably need some other MIDI controller to do that nice and easily. Also the switch's placing could cause some problems for the left-handed amongst you. And obviously because of its size you can't really use the key switch presets in your sample library or easily change them to what you want it to be. But I guess there's just no easy way around that. That's just what you get when you have a really pint-sized keyboard like that. And the keys themselves are really not very wide or big at all, so if you've got huge, big, bulky fingers, then that's probably going to be an issue. If you've just got tiny carrot fingers like me, then it should be fine. It comes boxed up, though, without any kind of carry case, and as far as I know, it works fine with any of the major DAWs. But despite its lightweight and basic build, it still feels pretty sturdy. It certainly lives up to the build quality do you expect from M Audio. I do tend to get quite bad and sometimes really bad latency when I use this though, to the point where I have to move the MIDI about in my DAW to make up for it. But the issue with the USB port and the latency are the only two real issues I've actually come across during my four years of using this thing. It is what it is, it's small, it's compact, it is great for travelling. Would you want it in your main studio? No. Would you want it in a makeshift studio? I think so. It's not got all the bells and whistles, but it's got what you need, and it does the job fine, really. So as long as you don't have enormous hands and you can set aside a bit of time just to do a bit of tweaking to make up for its limitations, then it should do a bang-up job. As long as you don't expect too much from it, then I'd say for that price tag, it's worth it. So thanks for watching guys, if you own the M Audio Keystation Mini 2, tell me what you think about it down in the comments below. Also if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit like, and you can check out this product on Amazon by clicking the links down below in the description. And if you're new here, it'd be incredible to have you subscribe so you can check out more reviews, behind the scenes stuff, and incredible stories about music and film.